Hello there guys, welcome back to Eunice Talks Football, welcome back to a brand new video, I hope all of you are doing well today. As we get into the latest, and um, it's been a fairly quiet day on the Chelsea front, but there have been a couple of things, and there's been a couple of things elsewhere, so today is going to be quite a mixed video, however, tomorrow... I do have to say, thankfully, um, because this is the bread and butter that we sign ourselves up for, but thankfully, football is back. So, um, preview for Bournemouth versus Chelsea will be out tomorrow. Make sure you're subscribed, notification bell on. Don't forget to check out the socials, Insta especially, as I'm very active on there, so make sure you guys are there and following. Much appreciated. Links in the description. Um, but Bournemouth-Chelsea is going to be an interesting one. And I have to say, tomorrow I'm looking forward to the press conference of Enzo Maresca because of what's happened at Chelsea, the ownership are trying to kill each other and all of that. Not literally, but you get the gist. I know Enzo Maresca is going to have to bear the brunt of it and he's going to have to answer loads of questions and it's not his place to do so, but he's going to be the front man. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing how the press conference is going to be navigated and um, thoughts are with him personally because he shouldn't have to answer anything but he's gonna have to so we'll get into it tomorrow in the preview when I react to that and I tell you what I think should happen on match day right also the review after that game will be out so make sure you guys are here for that let's get into the latest starting with David Datrofafana we've got news oh and by the way can I pause actually really because I said Fafana and I was like okay pause listen Everyone that's in the comments, right? You're not new here. Well, most of you are not new here. So you kind of understand how things run on this channel. The amount of people that I see are commenting before they've even watched 20 seconds of the video is outrageous. How can anyone comment on something they've not watched? How can someone have a view on something they've not even seen? It doesn't comprehend. It doesn't... People are going to say, oh, you, but you, you put a clickbait title. It's not a clickbait title. And like I said, you're not new here. You understand how it works. You understand the titles that I put out. I put out titles to create some intrigue. I always leave a question mark. I never, never go full clickbait, ever. And people know that. But there's a reason why that it has to be like that on some sort of level because we are looking to get new people onto the channel too. It's not just for the people that are here, but it's the people that are already here that are commenting before watching the video. So watch the video first and then place your comments. And I think life will be easier in the comment section. We've got a very good comment section. Let's not ruin it. <laughs> I see other channels and their comments are horrible, right? Not, not naming names, of course, but I mean, just across the spectrum. There are some channels out there and I'm like, bloody hell, that's chaotic. Um, so let's not do that. But talking about Fofana, because Fofana's not going anywhere, Wesley, let's talk about David Datro. David Datro Fofana, well, it, we finally found the move. We found the move. The Greek window shut last night, and we managed to find a solution. Here it is. Gostepi SK agree loan deal with Chelsea for David Datro Fofana after AEK Athens' move collapsed. It also includes an option to buy and a recall clause in January. Chelsea can bring the player back from January 1st, 2025. Fair enough. This is a, well... It's a good deal on paper. In terms of a loan, this is a good deal. We can bring him back if we want. I mean, the great, the conditions are fantastic, but it is Gostepi in Turkey. It's not even like, you know, Besiktas, not even Istanbul Başakşehir. It's definitely not Fenerbahçe and Galatasaray. So we're clutching at straws here. We've had to find somewhere and we found somewhere. You know, so good luck to David Atro Fafana and I hope he does well out there. Um, we, he, he deserves better than this, if I'm honest. But it is what it is. And like I've mentioned before, when some people want to make the point that the off the field antics at Chelsea Football Club are not going to affect the on the field antics. Well, here's a clear example of how they will affect. When things are not harmonious at board level, at ownership level, all departments are affected, team included. Negotiations are, are, are affected. Guess what? We've still not got a front or shirt sponsor. Listen, I've got a front or shirt sponsor, right? I've got Mackenzie on here. Do you, shall I lend you this top? Like, so we have someone on the front of our shirts. Like, so we get in touch with Mackenzie. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, 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 it's going to affect the club. 
all levels. So my thoughts are with the squad and the coach and everyone because clearly everyone's going to be affected. And this is a clear example. We're lucky we even got this move for David Dutra Fofana. So that's that. Now, talking about how other ramifications might come into place, here's the latest from uh, Sammy Mockbell on a source that he has in relation to Chelsea's pathway for the academy graduates. So a source on Chelsea's pathway, they feel there is no pathway and they will just get lost in the machine. They don't trust that there is a pathway for them to the first team at Chelsea anymore. And I got to be honest, I, um, I, I know this is true and I agree with it, right? But, um, and I'll give an example. We all saw what happened to little Rio, didn't we? Who left Chelsea lately to go to Liverpool. Right, 16 years old. He chose to abandon that at Chelsea and go to Liverpool. Great move for him. Personally, I think he made the best decision. Because at Liverpool, he's definitely got a pathway. But it's not just about having a pathway. Because some people are going to say, oh no, but Roman never really gave a pathway to academy graduates. And to an extent, yes. To an extent, I agree. Chelsea were forced to look, at the, to, to look at the academy boys once we got a transfer ban, if you remember. Frank Lampard came in, and all of a sudden, Tammy Abraham... Well, we had Loftus-Cheek, we had Hudson-Odoi. Those were the only two that pretty much kind of made it through, right? Um, after JT, years ago. But once the transfer ban came in, well, Tammy Abraham, Mason Mount, um, Fikayo Tomori, um, later on, Billy Gilmore. Uh, load, loads, loads, loads of boys came through. Yeah, countless. I think, how, how many? If we had to say somewhere between 10 to 15 boys came through the academy and played for Chelsea in the first team, at least for a little bit. Um, prior to the transfer ban, that wasn't really a case. But, there's a big but. Because some people say, oh no, yeah, but these owners are not really looking at the academy, but neither did Roman. There's a big difference though. Roman never abandoned the first team, did he? Roman made sure the first team was there, with quality, competing. Oh yeah, we're winning silverware, we're winning trophies, we're not bringing the standard down, we're not experimenting, we're not, not no, 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 the first team was at a high level. And we had a massive, humongous loan army if you remember, 40, 50 guys out on loan, which we did manage to get done, by the way, unlike David Datro Fafana in this instance, where we've had to clutch at straws to get him a loan move. <laughs> when we wanted people gone, they were gone, yeah? So the team was never in jeopardy. There's a difference, because the academy boys of back then could have easily looked at the Chelsea first team and go, that's hard to get to, bloody hell, that's difficult. Yeah, and if I can get one opportunity just to even have a game, then I know I'm doing something right. The academy boys now are definitely looking amongst themselves and going, I should be in that first team squad. That's the key difference here. And that's why they're more disillusioned than the boys of before. These lot are looking and going, how am I not even getting looked at? And rightfully so. When we're experimenting and we're looking at just buying loads of young players and kids and whatnot, well, those are young players and kids too that are coming through the system and they're not, they're not getting a look in. Or the ones that do, eventually will end up sold. Chalaba is a prime example because Conor Gallagher is at least a little bit in demand. Look, Atletico Madrid and whatnot. Chalaba in a position where he was, for me, still one of the best names in the flipping squad and he's gone. Why? Well, you know, well, we, we, we couldn't even sell him. We couldn't sell him properly. He should still be at Chelsea as far as I'm concerned. But what message is that going to send out to the other lads? Someone that should still be in the squad, but isn't, because we are trying to actively get money for him, or from him. That's, it's not the same message as it was for the academy boys before when Chelsea were actually operating at a very high level. So that's the key indicator here. That's the key difference. And this is why... I do genuinely believe a lot of academy boys are looking and going, yeah, this, this, is, this is just not for me. And it's going to have a big impact. Big impact. For the boys coming through, you're cutting them off from the first step that they make. And we really shouldn't. So let me know your thoughts down below on that. Much appreciated. As we move into other things. Now, Enzo Fernandez is looking like he's escaping punishment. 
So, Fernandez was on international duty, meaning it is a matter for FIFA and Conembol, not the English FA, where it was stated he will escape punishment by the FA for his role in a discriminatory social media video due to a technicality in disciplinary procedures. Basically, the video that was on Instagram that we spoke about weeks ago, well, yeah, he was on international duty. It was outside of the UK. It's got nothing to do with Chelsea. He was, you know, with the Argentine team. So, it's not an issue for the FA, basically. Anyway, um, we'll see what happens in that regard. And we know nothing's going to happen in England. We'll see if anything happens elsewhere in relation to that. I don't think anything will happen. Anyway, let's wait and see. Now, congrats to this player, Noni Madawake, who, on, in this video launched today by the England team, um, was videoed doing his, uh, or making, his first speech. Um, which happens to players that get their first cap for, for England. Um, and Jolien Lescott was the one that gave him his cap. There it is. Um, <laughs> so uh, he, Lescott still looks the same, by the way. Um, but Madawake made a speech and um, very humble speech, very um, wise speech with some very nice words in there. But I, I, I thought I'd show this because I have to commend Noni Madawake. In the midst of all this chaos at Chelsea as well, he is one of the few that is actually growing. And you can see he's getting, he's getting better and he's developing. And it's, um, it's refreshing. Um, it's not everybody. There are players there that we, we have in the squad where you're just looking and going, what's, what's going on with you, right? I think we can all name one certain left winger. But Madueke, on the other hand, He's making progress for club, for country as well. He had a great game for his first game uh, for, for England. And you saw the assists. And listen, um, we had a thing with Madueke in terms of his maturity. We saw that last season. There were issues there. I hope and I'm thinking that he's gone past those and he is putting his head down and he's doing what needs to be done. And I hope he doesn't get carried away because it is still the beginning. But... Huge commitment to Noni Madueke. All I have to say, keep it up. Keep it up. Because it's, it's nice to see and I'm happy for him. And um, if he's having that impact for England, that's a huge confidence booster. So Noni Madueke, good luck. Keep it up. And um, I hope the boy has a fantastic season, honestly. Uh, because he is showing those signs. And I'm very happy to see it. So big up to Noni Madueke. Um, right. Elsewhere, before we end. <laughs> Listen. Arsenal have had their problems. Ch Chelsea definitely have problems. Um, Liverpool have had their problems. United definitely have problems. Um, Tottenham are a problem. <laughs> They've always been a problem for themselves. But there's one club that are looking, they have been looking for ages. They, they're looking at the rest of us and going, <laughs> hey, Habibi, look at these amateurs. Look at these, uh, they, they are pathetic. Uh, look at them. They, they, they don't stand a chance against us. They do not stand a chance. All right, Habibi, get the shisha. And that's Man City. Whoa, 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 whoa. Is that time coming to an end? Breaking. The hearing over Man City's 115 charges will start on Monday. Well, bring on Monday. <laughs> bring on Monday. However, I do want to... I don't want to, um, you know, rain down on people's parade. But... Um, I don't think we're going to see very much happen. Like I've said before, they might get a fine. They might get a points deduction. That's it. They ain't getting relegated. They're not getting chucked to League Two. They're not all these, you know, theories that are out there that should happen. It's not going to happen. Come on, man. It's Man City. If this was Tottenham, maybe. The Premier League has too much to lose by ejecting Man City out of it. It's just, come on. You got to think in terms of what the FA and the Premier League could lose. They could lose substantially a lot here. Man City are the benchmark. They are it right now. The Premier League losing their creme de la creme. Come on, it's not going to happen. Um, so this is why, yeah, they'll get a fine. They'll get a little points deduction, maybe. It's Man City. They know if they get, imagine City with a ten points, a, a, a ten point deduction. Well, great. Now the league is competitive. They're still in the title race. <laughs> it's Man City. Come on. So this is where I don't think it's going to be much. But the the, the key thing here, it's one hundred and fifteen charges. It's a lot of charges, man. You can't possibly come out of this completely innocent. Surely not. It's one hundred and fifteen. 
Surely you're guilty of at least five, ten. Surely. So this is where I say, okay, there, there might be some punishment, but I don't think it's going to be a lot, but we'll see. The procedure begins on Monday. So Man City, it's time to get sweaty. It's time to get sweaty. So let's wait and see what happens. Let me know your thoughts on that. Two little things before we wrap up. This is interesting. So former England manager Gareth Southgate says his next job could be outside of football. Sweet. Manager of B&Q or Primark, I'm guessing. Yeah. <laughs> now listen, he would make a great tennis umpire. It, look, just look at him. Imagine, imagine Southgate. There we are. Imagine he's on the chair. And he's a tennis umpire, and you know, he calls 15 love, uh, 30 love, game, like, he, he, or he could be a cricket umpire, you know, he could do that. Or uh, someone said he should be a, um, an insurance ma company manager or something. Uh, yeah, he probably fits the bill for that too. Uh, what do you think he should do? Let me know down below. And um, PSG, taking L's after L's after L's. The LFB legal committee has ruled that PSG must pay Kylian Mbappe 55 million euros in unpaid salaries and bonuses. See, this is where Mbappe had PSG literally where he wanted them. You know, he wasn't stupid. Perez isn't stupid. Real Madrid are not stupid. They knew what they were doing, man. They, they had PSG on strings. PSG fumbled hard. Not only did Mbappe go to Real Madrid and get a signing on fee, left as a free transfer, PSG didn't pocket a penny, but now they lose 55 million as well. <laughs> man, man, unbelievable. PSG, how not to do business, basically, when it comes to selling players. That's a key example. So, um, unlucky PSG. Well, it's not unlucky. You've done yourselves over, but well done to Kylian Mbappe. What a, um, what a moneymaker. Anyway, let me know your thoughts down below on all of that. Much appreciated. Don't forget tomorrow, Bournemouth versus Chelsea preview on here. So make sure you're subscribed, notification bell on for that and more, as well as socials on screen right now, Instagram, as well as Twitter. Make sure you're hitting the links in the description. If you haven't done so already, give us the follow there and keep up with everything away from YouTube. And I will see all of you tomorrow on the preview. Have a good one, people. Look after yourself. See you tomorrow. Take care and peace.